So isn't it a beautiful day to work on my Discovery 3? <laughs> so explain to our viewers what we are doing today. The first thing we gotta take care of is your rear parking brake. It failed. We basically overhauled this car completely, but we left the old parking brake module in. I put new cables on, I got new shoes on and everything, and after that it failed. I may have done something wrong, that's one potential cause, but it could also be that it's just too old. It's 275,000 kilometers old, and Vera uses it several times a day, because this is a manual transmission and our driveway is downhill. We're gonna take it out and check out what the problem is. It's minus two degrees today. And the sun's out. We got the queen out of the way. We got our mall crawler out of the way. These two are happy right now. So we shouldn't be talking so loud so they don't get disturbed and can take a rest here while we're working on Vera's 2006 Land Rover Discovery 3. We rebuilt the parking brake module with new gears 130,000 kilometers ago when it had just about 130,000 kilometers. So maybe the lifetime of those gears is over just as a coincidence with our rebuild. Maybe we didn't do anything wrong. Who's drinking all this monster stuff? Philip and his friends. The first thing we gotta do is lower the spare wheel down. Yeah, you pull it out and you can get to it. You just gotta move the monster out of the way. <laughs> okay, we did a complete full rebuild on this car and whatever we have not touched or replaced and renewed is now still failing. Servo pump, front servo hoses. We got a problem now with the steering rack. We got a problem with the front lower suspension arms. We have a problem with the parking brake module. Those are all things we did not replace. And that's not even mentioning alternator, starter motor, blah, blah, and more. You have to treat a Discovery 3 with almost 300,000 kilometers like a classic car. You do not buy a old Discovery to save money. Oh my god, did you hear that? That is one problem we have to tackle. It's a steering. Put the, because we can put it into gear and my parking brake is failing. We get a lot of comments like, um, is your Uga Duga or our lift not bothering our neighbors? The Uga Duga is not running hours on end, it's seconds. And those uh, are the seconds you see in the video. Yes. We also are very conscious of our neighbors. We do not use any Uga Duga on Sundays. We also stay in the regular daylight hours. We don't work at night. Yeah. And we also just in general are quiet people, okay? Except for Robin when he's blacksmithing in our backyard or in his workshop right here. We're not working on our cars whole week along like you think when you watch our videos. We're actually working on our cars mainly on a Saturday. And on a Sunday we do quiet stuff, okay? Stuff which broke on the Discovery and we are kind of whispering and there's absolutely <laughs> no Uga Duga. Yeah, we get a lot of comments how our lift is going to hold this Discovery because it's so overweight. And this is the thing I made. So it's a little stud and it goes right into the frame. This way, if the lift is somehow distorting a little bit um, when we raise the car up, it's not losing the vehicle for sure. Also in the back, I got basically sides welded on these so it doesn't slip off the frame. This helps a lot when you jerk on the car when it's up on the lift and that's why we don't support it in addition. The lift is rated for three tons and our discovery is about 2.95 tons when it's fully loaded. <laughs> you see somebody putting something underneath his lift. The reason is he knows when he put up that lift that he kind of took the easy route and didn't do it right and now he needs to put something underneath. Or did you ever see somebody in a workshop putting something under the car when they have it on a regular lift? No, they don't. If that's underneath the lift, we are extremely careful because if we forget it or don't move it out all the way, you're going to have a catastrophe. <laughs> yes, you're right, my dear. See, I got two sides welded on here, so this is hugging the frame nicely. Oh, it's frozen in. <laughs> Disable the parking brake module because once I start to pulling plugs on it, it may actuate and break the new module right away. So it's a good idea to take that fuse out. And we also gonna disable the, the air, air suspension, suspension because when we lift the car up, the air suspension is gonna wake up and do crazy stuff and we don't want that. And no, we're not gonna install a switch. 
Okay, jerk it up a very short time. Good. Are you not cold? No. See how nicely it's captured here? No way that we're gonna lose this car on the lift. Now, if you do wanna see how we put this foundation in for our lift, there are two videos about this and you can see where are digging those holes. I gotta put some oil on the lead screw here because there is actually an oiler installed, okay? But that oiler is not working very well when it's that cold. And I cannot believe we ever lift without a lift. <laughs> wow. We're gonna follow the instruction of the Land Rover workshop manual for the Discovery 3. Now we are somewhat lucky because we got a 2006. That's easy, if you have a 2009, it's a pain because you got a different spare wheel mount bracket, which is in the way of removing the parking brake actuator, but it is possible. They are street legal in Germany and the TÜV does not care. They actually have a certification for this vehicle. Moving the rear caliber mounting bracket. Or not. Okay, this one is open. 12 point sockets. Yes. Okay, there's the mounting bracket off, including caliper. So I've got this secured right here, so it's not gonna drop throughout the repair. Looks good. I'm using a siphon plier to remove the cable nut here. Don't go on this hex head, it will snap off right away, okay? See, I can get the nut off easily because we got plenty of copper grease on here. If you didn't do that when you assembled it, you're gonna be already stranded on this nut. Nobody who's ever gonna do that had it already open. I can already wiggle it and it's loose. So the other half of you who got the nut off and the cable is still corroded in are going to be stranded at least there now. Oh my god. My goal is now to take the cable out actually without removing any component here. <laughs> oh my god. And everybody can see that this is possible. So I saved me now taking all this apart. So he's got to do everything he just did on the driver's side, now on the passenger side. And we are going to do that off camera because I have to prep lunch. Yes. We are now about 35 minutes in the job. Yes. And it takes us a lot longer because we talk so much. Yes. <laughs> and we are having fun. We also do a lot of arguing behind the camera that also <laughs> stretches out the job. Good. I gotta turn the wedge adjuster to the home position. Now I gotta wiggle the cable. See, it's all loose. Nothing is stuck on my car because it's all well maintained. I'm sorry, Vera's car. Remove this clip from one side of the shoe. This way the shoe moves forward a little bit. Oh boy. That frees up the room here behind it. Now I can use this hook and try to capture the spring. I got the spring away from the cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I got to use a small screwdriver and I got to open this little wedge here. I flipped this open. It already fell down by gravity. Now I give it a jerk here. There it is. Okay. So that's like completely different than we did on the other side. It's exactly the same procedure what I used. Just oh, okay. I didn't explain it to you. Within minutes I had both cables loose. So now we are ready to lift the car. <laughs> now once it's up, we gotta wait 30 seconds to see if it falls down. Now we got many <laughs> desktop mechanics and we love them, okay? Yeah, yeah. And we got one hater. See how nice your car looks from underneath? Yes. Okay, you gotta stop recording. I have to find my bearing now. Disconnect inner cable from the brake shoe. That's all done. Okay, here's the next step. Release the left-hand parking brake cable. Remove the bolt securing two clips. Release the three wiring harness clips. Release the cable from the clip on the chassis. Remove the fuel tank heat shield. We can already do that. Fuel tank heat shield gone. Oh really? I thought it was a prop shaft heat shield. Prop shaft is still holding up beautifully. There is the first stainless steel, including copper grease. See it? Second one out. Now this cable here should already be pretty loose. I have to pull either a bungee cord or a wire in the direction of this cable so I know exactly how it goes back in when we pull the new cables. Oh yeah. And here you can see I got a wire 
and this wire is in parallel to my cable so I know exactly which cable it crosses here where and with this in place I can now pull the wire out oh my god remove the emergency release cable which is this one right here I'm just pulling this out of the cab I hope you guys know how to release that yeah Okay, I got the emergency release cable now hanging straight down here. It's a pretty tight fit, okay? And it's quite a struggle. And now you can see I got both cables hanging here. Okay, one. Second cable. And it is corroded already. And it didn't have any copper grease. Oh, better Those? not forget that. You're falling over stuff? <laughs> yes. It I have it marked with a wire going from here yeah. all the way to here. This way I know exactly the routing and the cable is now nicely here free. Yes, and that took longer than we care to admit. <laughs> um, I would say both freeing up both cables was about an hour, yeah. an hour ten. We're going to remove the parking actuator mounting nuts here. This is really difficult if you got a 2009 because then this opening isn't there. And you got to actually reach here through this side and over here through this side. It's doable, you just have to get your arm up in there as if you would be working on a cow farm. That also goes for the Discovery 4. And I just noticed that I didn't tighten those nuts. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. See, there's one up. Now the actuator is already free. Yeah, I don't see anything. Okay, there it is. Oh my God. It's upside down now, so I gotta stick it in upside down and twist it around when it's inside. Oh. So this is really tight. You pull this here and I give it some cable. Okay. Yeah? Yes. There you go, my dear. Yeah, you can come to my side now. Yes. There it is. So we'll put this here on the ground. Thanks. Now, can we put it in the sun? It's warmer in the sun. Okay. The sun is right next to... Oh no, be careful! <laughs> It's very unfortunate that this baby does not work anymore. And we can open it up now and check inside if the gear is broken. So this is glued. This is glued with silicone. And we shouldn't have any water in there. If there's water in there, it would have been our own mistake. There it is. This doesn't look good. Did you see how that was crumbled up here? Yes. Well, but this cable Looks like got tangled up because this is moving. Oh. Using my siphon plier, I can take the cables off. Don't even think about using a wrench on this. It will break. Uh, I don't know what direction to turn it. So I got this all out. You can see the cables are new. They're really easy to move. The Teflon coating is still good. Now I can take this thing out. That's the gearbox now. Okay, Vera is hoping for some spectacular moment. Yes. <laughs> One more bolt. This is the spring which holds the clutch in. There's supposed to be a clip sitting here. See, oh. there's the clip. Yeah. And it jumped off. See? Yeah. This clip is supposed to sit here. If this clip is not sitting there, this thing is jumping back and it's not holding in this clutch. This is a clutch, see? So, oh my God, we're going to do a repair and not spend any money. No, we're not going to spend any money. We're going to replace the gear set and that's it. So I have to say something. This is Brit part. <laughs> you already spoiled it. Oh my <laughs> no, God. Because I cut it out. You can still say it. Yeah, but I have to laugh now. That is a Brit part gear set. We, we put in a hundred and thirty thousand kilometers ago, but I have to say. Oh, it's melted here. Ah, it's melted. Yeah, look, it's not coming out. If we can fix OEM, we fix OEM. Not because it's cheaper, it's safer. We got new cables. We found a clear root cause for the problem. I can re-engineer this and actually improve it so it's better than OEM and it will never break again. Can you go upstairs and get the gear set? They are down here. <laughs> These are the gears I bought on Amazon. 28 euros, brake part is more than a hundred. So, and here's the gear which is actually broken. It looks like this, okay. You can see it's the same gear and you can see this shaft is all gobbled up here on this one. This snap ring came loose. 
So we're going to have to pay special attention that this snap ring, which indeed doesn't fit that groove very nicely, does not come off again. It even turns nice. This is the slip clutch, so your actuator doesn't get overloaded. This is that high pitch noise you hear when your actuator is actually slipping, okay? It goes with a lot of RPM like this and it comes to that high pitch noise. Yeah, and in okay. our case, what happened is that the clutch spring, which is this one, pushing this together, came loose, this clip popped off, and then the clutch was not holding the torque anymore, and it came to this extremely high pitch noise. It didn't apply any more force to the cable and done. Okay, here are the gears which I took out of Fabian's car. And you can see this is a OEM clutch from Fabian's car. You can see it's completely intact, it's not worn out, it wasn't the root cause. So if you want, I can put you his OEM clutch in. And if you remember what he said, he said he never uses his actuator. So this is probably unused. So this part is probably better than brick part, I would say. Well, it's not brick part, it's cheaper. That is Amazon. Where well, Amazon is Britpart before Britpart bought it and marks it up 400%. In order to avoid that this ring is ever going to come off again, I'm going to make now a little sleeve which captures that ring on this little stop shaft. This is really high precision. You can see I can put this on here, okay? And it will trap this ring right here. All I got to do is part this off and we're all good. I can put this now on here and it's going to capture that ring and it's going to make sure it never comes off. So this should take care of this problem once and for all. So let's put this baby back together. One direction. Sounds good if you ask me. Yeah, I, I got a permanent fix done and you missed it. Everybody oh. knows now you missed it. You're gonna see it in the video how I fixed it. Yes. Of course, what did I do if we fix something? You machine something. Of course, on the lathe, in the kitchen. <laughs> so this goes back together here, go into detail. I gotta make sure these cables go on here and they're not gonna come off on their own, okay? Yeah. Don't introduce a secondary fault. Yeah, I know. Uh, you almost introduced a secondary fault. This gotta sit in this little groove here. <laughs> yeah, and now it's it sitting fits. down good, yeah. okay? When I click this in, there. And okay. the second problem is this little spot here. Yeah. The cable slipped out, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of hot glue here on top that's already enough just to hold this down during assembly yeah okay let's hope so get this old silicone out that's from us a couple of years ago no this is good bathroom silicone <laughs> but it's a brand new bottle so it was never opened before that is a bead of silicone that's a bead of silicone out yeah. of our bathroom. Yes, yes. I'm sure the, the desktop mechanics will let us know if this works or not, you know? <laughs> and we will let you know when it fails. So we'll put this on here. Why are there screws left over? Because you messed up. So I'm marking one side of the cable because we're going to have to crank this in exactly five turns. This is turn number one. Five. Hard to believe. Yeah, Let's that's go it. six. Oh my god. Let's go six. Okay, I can't believe five is right. Oh. Okay, so this can go back together. Hold it exactly like this. I'm holding. So you have to be also a DIY home improvement guy if you want to work on a land road. This side we never loosened. You that's sure? It. 
Yep, it can go back in now. So now we are ready to put it back in and there will be a lot of off-camera scenes. <laughs> Little bit of silicone grease for the rubber grommet. Hold it. Yeah, so Christian's working behind the bracket. Unfortunately, we cannot see his struggle, but the struggle is real. And we have one divorce later. Yes, because he didn't listen to my idea, and my idea yeah. worked. My idea worked. Okay, it was a bigger debacle. There's not much room to get this baby in. You have to tilt it like that. And we found an obvious source. So That's always a good thing. Because the worst thing is if you work for eight hours and <laughs> your car is just as broken as before, which we experienced on our green here for four weeks. No problem. Yes. Back in the position where it belongs. Yeah. You sure? This clip goes up here. I don't see. You don't need to see anything. Okay, then I don't need to film. Okay. Connector goes back on. Done. It didn't click. It clicked. Plenty of anti seize onto these pieces because they corrode in really badly. The difficult part was to get that spring seated again and getting the cable through the lever. But it worked with a little bit of, you know, yelling at Vera. It, yes. Uh, I don't know if you can see what he's doing. I can't. <laughs> okay, now we got to mount this pin here. All is back in. <laughs> yeah, after a major debacle. <laughs> Oh, because it's all so easy in a 20 minute video from us, people get the idea they can buy a Discovery 3 and fix it. <laughs> Think about it twice. YouTube videos last between 20 and 40 minutes and not the eight hours it actually took to do the repair. We get so many comments, oh, you didn't do that and that. No, it just didn't make it into the video. Footage is usually six hours and that gets you 20 minutes. Or, yes. Yeah. They are relatively new, but they're already worn out again. What the hell? Why doesn't it go back on? There it is. So, caliber bracket mounting bolts, rear 115. I knew that. So 115, you can translate that to how many Ugadugas? I don't know. Um, approximately 115. No, not approximately. Exactly. There. Okay. Yeah. So except for adjusting, this side is done. Yeah. That's where the water gets in and ruins everything over time. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. We have two hours of daylight left and we have still two cables to mount. Oh my God. All I gotta do now is run this cable along my wire here. Yeah, that's what we thought on the other side also. Okay, I missed running it along the wire, okay? <laughs> How long am I gonna have to hear about this now? Yeah, something wrapped around my prop shaft. What could it be? Yeah, That's it's a cable from the parking brake. That stuff you didn't fasten down correctly. Yeah, or somebody else. It snaps in here, it snaps in here. I can see it. Here? Yeah. So we have decided we will from now on and forever buy only one size tie wrap and shorten them to lengths. <laughs> completely stupid idea to have tie wraps in different lengths. Okay, yeah. I need a cutter. <laughs> And in reality, we put one more on. Yeah. First of all, that amount of anti seize you put on. See there? So I hope so, you guys can see it. Yeah, it's on. See? Okay. Yeah, I can see it. That we put some <gasps> anti seize on. You got anti seize on my brake pad. Yeah, we're gonna wipe that back off. Yes. So for those worried, now there's a little bit more. The shoes last longer if you put anti-seize on. <laughs> yes, I believe you. Okay, so I educated her to stick her finger to hold the pin and with the other thumb she can hold the caliper. Can you spring it a little bit? So, see, she can hold this. And now I can put the clip on here. 
you have to hold it from here. There you go. Good. We managed it. That's unbelievable. I managed it. Oh, you managed I it? I did, did three things. <laughs> you can leave your hand now. You yeah, it's my now, hand okay? is stuck. Is it stuck? Take yeah. it out. Now we can knock these around and get them all nicely seated. So, putting on the disc brake. Good. It is adjusting. Oh my god. So they get tightened to uh, 150 newton meters. He didn't tighten that yet. Because I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah, but shouldn't we do one thing first no, before you, we start another problem? You work on multiple things at the same time. This way you get confused, but you also get a lot of stuff done then suddenly all at once. Talking to 115. A siphon plier. You don't need that on a Toyota. In the first step, I gotta lever the brake shoes up from the wedge adjuster up. Wedge that brake shoe up. This brake shoe is now stuck up here. I gotta wedge it up. Then I rotate this over. I gotta wedge this one up. Once this is done, I gonna rotate this over the wedge adjuster. And now I gotta rotate the wedge adjuster out until the brake locks up. There it's tight. I open it up one. There it's loose. I tighten it up one. It's tight again. So now I'm exactly at the right spot. And now I gotta open it 10 clicks. I got like a Q-tip and I mark one tooth from the wedge adjuster. And now I gotta open it up. So the white tooth is forward again, which should be 10 clicks. 10. <laughs> so where is it? I don't know. But it's between 8 and 10. That's good. The Discovery yeah. 4 manual says 8. The Discovery 3 manual says 10. So it's in between. The switch. Just the turn. And tighten this one with 4 newton meters. 2, 3, 4. Okay. So. If I'm not mistaken, we should be able to apply the parking brake and tighten those once the other side is done. Yeah. So marking. Five, six, seven, eight. Slam all the way around. And I think we're done. Oh my God. So we took them to spec after we tried out. Yeah, putting the heat shield back in. Yeah. She had to get a coat over her down jacket because it's really cold when the sun is gone. Okay, fuse is back in. We leave the air suspension fuse out for a moment. I'm scared. That sounds normal. Oh my God. Open and now I close it. Oh my god! Oh, and it sounds quick and quiet. It just sounds right. Yeah, it sounds quiet. No. I should be able now to tighten the wheel lug nuts. Yeah, but don't we have to do an embedding procedure or stuff like that? I'm not going to go in any bedding procedure anymore today. <laughs> Only if you have new shoes. Here. Okay. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so happy too. Oh my god. They weigh like nothing compared to the queen. Mm. Having a parking brake allows you to torque them with the wheels in the air. We're mounting my spare wheel because Christian says that tire is done. After this rebuild, we put on a lot of miles and we haven't done an alignment, a wheel alignment. Yes, because and the queen was taking up so much time. Yes. So now the parking brake is applied and the car is not going to roll away. Those are just normal noises. Holy cow! And we we'll close this up. Got like a little toolkit in the car. From Aldi. And this goes in the front. Now that was, was in a bad condition, air-wise. And that's it for this episode. 
I hope you enjoyed what you saw and it helps you decide if this car is something for you or not. And at this time, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and we'll see you next Sunday. Good. And. Whoa, what was that? The brake. No fault anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh my and God. for the first time, you can let it run in idle now without the car rolling away. Oh, such a pretty car. I mean, I can understand that everybody wants to have a discovery. They are the best, but they are the most difficult to maintain. <laughs>